Hi there, as always, thank you for joining me. This video, unlike some of my others, doesn't need much of an introduction. We are simply going to take a look at Pythagoras theorem. We're going to have a look at what it actually is and work through a couple of examples. <music> Okay, let's start by having a quick look at what Pythagoras is and how it helps us. The first thing that we have to take note of is that Pythagoras theorem only works on right angled triangles. Do not try to use it on any other kind of triangle, it simply doesn't work. So once we have a right angled triangle, if we know the lengths of two of the sides, we use the theorem to work out the length of the third side and that is what Pythagoras is all about. So let's have a look at how it actually works. So here we have a right angled triangle. Usually a question will tell you that it's right angled but of course if we have the little square in the corner we already know that. In this example we know the length of the two shorter sides. So we've got five centimeters down the side and 12 centimeters along the bottom. I'm going to label the three sides. So we will call the shorter side, side A. The longer side along the bottom will be B. And the longest side is C. We're going to use a formula. And this is the Pythagoras formula. It tells us that A squared plus b squared equals c squared. Every time we are looking to work out Pythagoras theorem, this is the formula we're going to use. We will see in a later example that sometimes we have to switch it around slightly. So what does this mean? Well, quite simply, it means that if we take the length of side A, in this case, it's five centimeters, and we square it, in other words, five squared, and we add it to the length of side B, which is 12 centimeters, but that has also got to be squared. What we will get is the square of side C. So working that all out, five squared is 25, and 12 squared is 144. So we add those together, we get c squared. Therefore, 169 equals c squared. The last part we have to do is to work out then the square root of 169. The square root is the opposite of squared. So if c squared, let's rewrite it up on here, if c squared is 169, that means that c is the square root of 169. If you're not sure about roots and squares, have a look at that little topic first. That might just help you along with this part of the calculation. The square root of 169 is in fact 13. Therefore, C equals 13, and we have the length of our third side, 13 centimeters. This example is exactly like the previous one, just helping us to get used to the rule. Don't forget, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So the first thing we do is take a, which is three centimeters. So that's three squared. Plus, we then take b, which is four centimeters. So that's four squared equals c squared. And that's what we're looking for, the length of c. So three squared equals nine, three times three is nine, and four squared, four times four is 16, and that is going to equal c squared. So nine plus 16 is 25, therefore c squared is 25. So again, writing up the side here, if we know c squared equals 25, then we know that c is therefore the square root of 25, therefore c, the square root of 25, is 5. So this triangle is in fact 3 centimeters, 4 centimeters, 
and the longest side is five centimeters. Now let's look at an example where we know the length of the longest side and one of the shorter sides. So here again, we have a right angled triangle. This time we are told the length of side C being 12 centimeters and the length of side B, which is 10 centimeters. We are looking therefore at the length of side A. Now, because we know the formula is A squared plus B squared equals C squared, we're in a slightly different situation here because we know what c squared is therefore what we need to do is turn the formula around a little bit if a plus b is equal to c then c minus b must give us a so what we're actually looking for is c squared minus b squared equals a squared looks a little bit more complicated but if you just think that the squares of the two smaller sides add up to the square of the larger side then taking one of the smaller ones from the larger is going to give you the other side so let's put that into play what we have is first of all c squared well c is 12 so that is 12 squared we're going to take away one of the shorter sides to find the other. So we're going to take away b squared. So that's 10 squared. And the answer is going to be a squared. Let's work that one out. 12 squared is 144. And 10 squared is 100. So that is all going to equal a squared. 144 minus 100 gives us 44. So we know that a squared, let's rewrite that up the side again here, a squared equals 44. We do exactly the same as we did in the first two examples. The only difference is we've changed the formula around to find the side that we want. Therefore, a equals the square root of 44. Now in this case, and this is very typical of a question like that, the answer is not a round number, it's not an integer. The answer is actually 6.63 and the number does continue but we're going to round it to two decimal places, 6.63 centimetres and usually you would round your answer to two or maybe three decimal places. Quite often the question will ask you to do that. So this example again then, because we had the longer side already, we had to square that, take away the square of the short side that we knew to find the third side. And that really is pretty much it for the Pythagoras theorem. But I did want to show you this because if you do look in textbooks and other videos, you may well see a diagram like this trying to explain Pythagoras theorem. So I want to just run through it so you know exactly what you are looking at. Here we have the right angle triangle in the center. Now let's give it the same sides as we did with the triangle earlier. Let's call this three and this four and this one was five. We worked this out a couple of examples ago. The reason that this particular diagram is drawn is because what we have is an illustration of the squares of the sides. In other words, if this side here, side we called it A in the past, so in fact, let's label them all now, A, B, and C. If we look at A, we said the formula is a squared plus b squared equals c squared and these are quite simply the squares if side a is three and this is a square that means that this side is three as well and of course the area of this square is nine three squared is nine therefore this bottom side here is a square which is four times four so four times four four squared is 16 so we have up here nine plus 16 this is a squared plus b squared and nine plus 16 well that's 25 
And of course, if we look at the long side of the triangle, it's five. Therefore, the square is five times five. Therefore, the area of this square is 25. So all we are looking at is the square of three, nine, the square of four, 16, is equal to the square of five, which is 25. So maybe slightly complicated diagram, but it is there to illustrate how the two areas of the smaller squares add up to the larger square. And of course, if we take one square from the other, 25 minus 16, we get nine. Therefore, the formula works in all different directions. You'll notice I haven't even actually quoted the Pythagoras theorem in this video. It talks about the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides and in itself is very, very complicated. You don't need to learn the actual quote, just the principles that we've looked at here in this video. And that is it for Pythagoras's theorem. You'll notice one of the triangles I used in the examples had sides of three, four and five centimeters respectively. That's quite a useful one to learn the three, four, five triangle because quite often you will see those numbers doubled, six, eight, 10 and so on. And that can sometimes be an easy way to find an answer. I hope that was of some use to you. If it was, please do hit the subscribe button immediately below here. Take a look at some of my other videos. I do hope you find them useful and hopefully I'll see you again. Thank you.